Hello and welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to City Skylines 2. One of my favorite new features in City Skylines 2 is the ability to purchase tiles that are disconnected from the other tiles that you already own. This feature allows you to create brand new standalone cities on different parts of the map. And the ability to create multiple standalone cities means that you can create regions. And this opens up the ability to create a county with many small towns that have formed in their own unique ways and have their own unique stories. But even if you're planning a large metropolis, this can be fantastic for you as well. As many of these small towns are gobbled up by the principal municipality in the region and become a unique neighborhood in that city. And in other cases, they go on to become important municipalities or suburbs in their own right. So in today's video, we'll go over where to create new towns on your existing map. We'll discuss how to mimic historic development patterns and work towards establishing a new town that can stand on its own two feet. I'll also show you how to use a districting tool to assign services to specific communities in your region so that the services work exactly as you intend them to. And if you've created separate towns in City Skylines too, hit the like button. And if you'd like to create one town and just keep it growing, hit the like button for that too and let me know what you prefer in the comments. Or leave an emoji letting me know how you're doing today for the sake of engagement and because I'm genuinely curious how you're doing today. I hope you're doing well. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge that today's build is only possible because we have been fairly conservative with our expansion permits. What I mean by that is we haven't been purchasing tiles just because we have expansion permits available to you. And this is a, a practice I would highly encourage you to adopt as well. If you were to just start buying tiles, they cost you money. And if you're not gonna use those tiles, it's kind of a waste. You also, have 529 tiles available for purchase on the map, but you can only purchase 441 in total. So if you're buying tiles just because they're close to you, you might be purchasing tiles that aren't necessarily super valuable. An example, let's say you were to buy this tile right here. It's 100% water. This tile is not valuable for you unless, of course, you're trying to draw a trade route through it. So there are tiles that you might not ever want to purchase. So think about these things. And in this case, because we've been conservative, we can found another city that's completely disconnected from our existing city. So on that note, where would a new city be founded? Now, historically, cities are founded around resources. So that might be an ore mine, it might be fertile ground, and they'd be founded around a transportation network. So in historical times, that was likely a train or even a natural harbor so that you could ship out the resource and get people to your community. And in city skylines too, that means that we probably want to locate near a highway so that we can take advantage of some of the city services that are available in our principal municipality. Second constraint, natural resources. So let's go into our info views and look at natural resources. And I only want to build near one of these natural resource sites. So we've got a large fertile ground resource right here. Another one right here, we got ores, we've got oil. These are all things that we could develop a community around. In this particular instance, I want a farming industry. So I'm thinking that we're going to develop around some fertile ground. So that makes this area right here jump out to me. This is a potential spot. Very, very large. We have our access to our community right here. This would be a very simple location. But I do want to mirror some of that historical pattern and think about developing near water. So that makes this location right here and this one right here jump out to me. Now, this one would feel like a continuation of our existing city. So that's why we're not going to develop right here. This right here seems like a standalone community. We've got access to fertile ground. We've got access to our highway. And if we turn off our natural resource view, we can actually see we've got access to power, which is one key utility we need to found the city. One important consideration is that you are not able to run power lines or water pipes or sewage lines through tiles that you don't own. So if we want to use the power that we have from this city, we need to be along this power line or purchase the tiles in between this city and our new one. So this cuts off some tile purchasing, which is why I love this location for a new city. So we are gonna purchase these four tiles. We'll have some farms over here and our city over here. Just a small town large enough to support the farms over here. So we've got the power, so we're gonna need a transformer if we wanna tap into this. We're gonna need our own water system and our own sewage system because we don't own the tiles in between here. I'm not really interested in purchasing those at this time. We will be able to reuse our trash facilities we could reuse our medical, fire, and police facilities if we wanted to, but we could also create some standalone services over here. So why don't we start thinking about building this city and move on to our roadway layout. 
To kick off our roadway layout, I want to basically create our farm road first and then we'll create our little community over here. So we'll go into our roads menu and I want to begin with a gravel road for the farm and then we'll open up our info views and look at our natural resources. And we'll also turn on our contours so that we can make sure that we're placing the road in a place that's appropriate. So I don't want to encroach upon this all that much. So we'll just have a straight road that follows closely along our fertile ground. The next road will be an alleyway. And this is what we're gonna use for our rural roads. I'm gonna hit the I button a couple of times so we get back to our default view. And I just wanna make sure that for this road, we're not falling off a cliff. So if we decide to zone along it, all the buildings are going to be at ground level. And then we'll go back to our gravel road because I want to make a simple bend here and we'll connect right up. And while I'm over here, before I forget about it, let's add our transformer. And this transformer is not primarily to connect to the outside world, though it will do that. It's really so that we can connect up to our own geothermal planet. So we'll just add a power line. And with this, this whole area is now connected up to the outside world and all the way over to our geothermal power plant across the region. So next i want to lay out this little community right here so we know that we're gonna have our farm right here we'll likely add a road down over here but i want to have you know really an eight block nine block a uh, little farming community over here so we'll go in with our normal roads and what i'm thinking is that we'll again try to follow our contours i will try not to cut up hills all that much so we will grade some of it so we'll do a bit of planning now Here's something that I've been getting more and more used to that I've been enjoying. So let's just, we'll turn off our grid and our guidelines so we can snap to the center of this road. And then I want to basically get fairly close to the sides of the water with this blue line. And that blue line is where the zoning would end. And then I'll send this out more or less where I want it to be. Now, if I delete this road, I can see all the baby trees. So the baby trees are where this road will lay out. So I'm going to grade after the fact which is probably a really weird way of handling it, but you know what, if the game allows it or if the game facilitates it or if it encourages, I'm not sure what it's doing. I'm gonna clearly do it. And just like that, by following the baby trees, I was able to completely grade where I wanted this road to be. I'll do the exact same thing here, although I don't want to go too far up this hill. I think that hill can be really special for us. And I also think that we need to think about having another road to connect up with our farm road. So as I look at this, there's a little bit of a valley here. I'm likely going to dig this out and then we're going to have two more connections across the highway. So one that's just a through connection and then another that leads into our interchange, which will probably be up here. So let's draw this connection first. And I think we're going to go with 88 by 88 blocks through here. So let's give that some consideration. So this is where our blocks will begin. So this is basically where that road going underneath the highway will go. And you see it pops up a little bit and that's what I want to avoid. So I've got my little baby tree again. I can see kind of where this is and I'm going to basically angle this road over. I'm going to choose this height. It seems like it's a reasonable center. We'll slope up to it here and then I'll take this height here because we already know that this one works. And now we just need to get underneath the highway. I think we'll just send this road straight back. Well, we'll have pillars in the way, so we'll need to go over just a little bit. So I'm gonna right mouse click up here. This is our top height and then the bottom height. We'll just slope up to it. So we'll bring this down all the way down to this road that we've already established down here. But you can see that we've got a number of meters of elevation difference here. So I think that once again, We'll, we'll fill in a bit right here. Right mouse click up here, left over here using our slope terrain tool and hopefully fill this in a bit. And now we will flatten things out through here, soften things up. And I think that this is rational, particularly when you have some of your main streets in your, in your area. Absolutely grade. Don't be afraid to grade. That is respecting the topography. Now, I think I wanna take this hill and turn it into a feature of this city. So we're going to basically wrap a road around here and maybe there could be some homes off the side of the road here and then this will be a large park for us. So we'll go into our continuous road tool and then try to follow the contour lines.
And this is going to be at the basis, the basic part of our town. We'll probably have our little commercial corridor right here, maybe with some row homes along the outsides. This will be where we have maybe a cemetery, maybe police and fire. And then I want to have a commercial district that leads into our interchange up here. So let's go ahead. We've got to do a bit more grading. This is a really challenging area unless we're just cutting right through, which I don't necessarily want to do. We'll push more dirt around. Now, I want to go underneath the highway for this interchange. This appears to be the best location for that. However, look at how much higher we are right here. We're like, I don't know, I'd say 10 meters up. Maybe not, maybe not. We're only three once we actually dig this out. So we'll extend this a little ways because it does appear to go back up over here. And then we'll use our slope terrain tool to clean things up. And again, with the slope terrain tool, you pick your top height and you slope from your top height to your lower height. Now for our interchange, there's a couple of things I want to keep in mind. So I want this to be very simple. This is not, you know, for interchanges, they don't have to be super elaborate. I think that's a trap that people sometimes will fall into. But if you look, especially in a small town, most of the interchanges are very simple. Just a quick way on and off. Nothing all that elaborate. Sometimes you'll have the interchange actually directing you to turn left or right from a particular lane. I think we'll take that into consideration, considering there'd be likely a, a fair bit of freight traffic on here. And then we'll send our road right underneath. Now for our interchange, I like to grab the highway and upgrade it before we ever think about adding our ramps. So I'm gonna upgrade this to have three lanes, makes it really easy to connect into then. And if you don't like where it's giving you your lanes, you can always grab a highway segment right here, add a node for yourself, and then downgrade this. We'll have to see. I do want enough space that it's actually possible to accelerate and decelerate, but at the same time, I don't wanna overdo it either. I think that this is probably fairly appropriate. So we'll go with that and then we're going to grab our one lane highway and we'll go into our continuous tool, which I think is the easiest one to use for this. We need to turn off snap to zoning cell length and to the grid. And this will allow us to snap to our lane right here. And I'll create one connection and this will eventually be a right hand only into here. And then we'll also give that connection. And we'll reverse these by using our replace tool, clicking and holding in the correct direction. And now that is perfectly set up. Let's do the exact same thing on the other side. And then for this one right here, I basically want to restrict this left-hand turn. So let's go into our road services. No left-hand turn here. So this is only a right. And then now that we fix this one over here, let's also turn off the right-hand turn right here so that everyone who wants to go onto the highway from this direction is forced to come over here. And then over here, I want to restrict the right hand turn on this one and the left hand turn on this one. So you're being forced to take the direction that you actually need to go. So we've got two more legs to add and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did over here. We're going to upgrade the highway, but it does seem like we are, our nodes are in the wrong spot. So I'm going to add a pillar right here. So I just went into my straight tool and I'll double click this and now I can upgrade this. And sometimes you've just got to be willing to make the big changes. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm sending this highway all the way back. There was a pillar right here that was conflicting and causing all sorts of problems. I want the pillar to actually be right here. And now with our pillars right there, we should be able to make better ramps. We just were, it's really steep because of the bridge that we have up here. So you've got to give yourself space. Now we could do the exact same treatment we did on the other side if we really wanted to, but I think in this instance, I may just do something like this. And then again, restrict certain movements. Like for this one, I don't want people going through. You get a right or a left. So this is way overly complex for this community, but you know what? We're, we're just having a little bit of fun. And then I wanna clean up some of the earthwork around here to, to round things out with our roadway network. And I think in this particular instance, we are going to give ourselves a bit of space to have some zoning. This would be highly desirable commercial land in the future. So we will add 100 brush size is about the full spectrum of zoning. And then we'll soften along here. 
Now, if you want this to feel really realistic, we, we obviously aren't banking soil, but you could add a larger hill back here or something like that. I'm not going to get overly crazy about it. I'm just going to try to make it look as good as it can and be happy with the end result. And then I'm going to finish the grading over here just so that we have some places that we can build. Before we wrap up other roads, I do want to stub in a future bridge connection across the water. You might wonder why I'm doing this, but right now we're going to be relying 100% on this interchange to connect up this community over here and our new community. And that's just not a very uh, intelligent way of designing a roadway network. That is just begging for future issues. So I'm going to add a roundabout right here, and I want to basically stub in a connection for a future bridge. We're not going to build the bridge today, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't plan for it in the future. And for now, folks will wonder why there is a stubbed road here, and uh, it'll be our secret. We know it. We know why it's here. <laughs> so that will be something that will be a trigger for me to, rem to remember to build that down the line. And with our road network complete, let's move on to building some of our basic city services. While we have one of our most important utilities, power, covered, there are many other city services that this area needs, including water, sanitary sewer, and public safety and communications. We need to make sure this place has the internet. Many of those are going to need to be served directly to this community individually. And water is where we're going to start. We're disconnected and we can't just link a water pipe through. We get this exceeds city limits notification. So we could purchase tiles in between. It looks like we're about two tiles away, but I don't really want to do that. Again, I want to be conservative with the tiles and only purchase them when I need them. So we are going to create a separate water system over here. And then for our other city services, we're going to use districts to control them a bit. So let's begin with our sanitary sewer and we only have our sewage outlet, which is fine. It's a small community and we will deal with this. But knowing that we have a little bit more money now because of our region size, I think that it does make some sense to think about upgrading it right away. So with your sewage outlet, you do have two upgrade options. You have chemical purification, which costs $4,000 per month. And that's what I want you to focus on, not the upfront cost. And it purifies 25% of the waste. These extra settling tanks cost 10,000 per month and they only purify 10%. So I think that you should almost always use this chemical purification. In fact, I don't think we added this to the other one. I'm gonna do that right now while it's on my mind. Indeed, we did not add that over here, so there it is. Maybe that'll make our water look a little bit cleaner. And then we don't need to have any sort of a road going to this, but we're gonna add one anyway. We'll add just an alley, and the alley will connect up that with a pipe. Otherwise, we could've just had a pipe going here that would work just as well, but why not go above and beyond and provide access to it? It's kind of surprising to me, honestly, that a road isn't required to access this facility. Now we need water as well. And we've got a couple of options. Obviously, the best option from a cost standpoint, both in terms of upfront costs and ongoing maintenance, is going to be a water pumping station. But here's the thing. The water is fairly stagnant here. And if you take a look at the arrows and the directionality, it's really tough to see what's actually happening. So I'm concerned that if we were to use a water pump here, there's a decent chance that we actually end up pumping the sewage up. Unless, of course, we go way over here. So I'm going to do something that is a lot less cost effective and have a water tower. I guess we could also try groundwater. That is another option. We could go for groundwater here. That would also do the trick. But I like the aesthetic of a water tower. So I think we're going to go for it. Now, looking at the upkeep cost, this is 30 grand a month, which is three times the cost of a water pumping station to produce one third the amount of water. So it's not cost effective. And I think we'll place this along the side of the highway. That's something that I always appreciate when I'm driving down the highway, seeing a water tower like this, it really welcomes you to that community. Now, one thing that you're able to do that I find to be very curious is there's one upgrade available. It's a viewing deck. It costs 500 bucks a month in upkeep, and it's relatively modest in terms of the capital cost, but it turns this into an entertainment facility, which is fascinating. I just think of the idea of the general public going up a water tower like this, and I shiver. <laughs> just the, thinking about the liability from a municipality, but whatever, we're going to go with it. Now we've got to think about communications, and... You know, internet is really important here. We're not going to worry about mail just yet. That'll be a future episode. But internet is something that I think we should think about right away. It makes people want to live in the community. And we are going to place that probably right here again off the side of the highway. And you see, it's not letting me find a location for this. I'll just turn off the snap twos. And then we just we need to be very careful about where the opening is. 
and I'm wondering if it'll let me place it on the roundabout. It will not. It says we're overlapping the highway. It will actually. So we'll place that right here and that will be good enough. So this whole place will now have telecommunications coverage, but let's double check it. Perfect. That is perfect. And again, we could upgrade this if we wanted to, but this should be good enough for now. And then I want death care over here. That's one of the first things you'd expect to see in a small town would be a cemetery. Now, the one thing that's really unfortunate about death care is that it actually is fairly expensive. So we're looking at $55,000 per month to have the cemetery. So we're basically committing to not have another cemetery in this community for quite some time. So, and I mean, generally throughout the entire region. The other thing that's unfortunate about this is this doesn't terraform all that well. So the front of the building where we have the parking lot will get real crazy if we place it on land that's not flat. So I'm trying to locate this in an area that's mostly flat. And then for the back end, it'll completely flatten everything out around here. So we're going to need to do a little bit of post placement terrain work. So I will go into the level terrain tool and just flatten this out. And I want to give enough space that I can make the hillside look a bit more natural. So you can see that I pulled that out about 40 units and I'll just gentle this up around the edge. Looking much, much, much better. And then two more services I think we absolutely must place here, police and fire. And obviously we wouldn't expect for a city to have all their services placed up front. So we're taking a couple of liberties here, but I think it's okay. Sometimes you gotta take some liberties. It's a game, you should have some fun with it. And I think we'll place that kind of along Lafayette Street right here. I'm gonna flatten some things out just a little bit. So police right here, and then fire we'll put right next to it. Now I wanna create a district around all of this. So we can start to assign these services to specific districts because I don't want these police and fire serving calls way over there. That doesn't make any sense. And the opposite way around as well. So we are going to create a district around this area. So we're popping into our areas tool and then we're going into our district creation tool. And just like we did in the previous episode, we're going to create a district. Although this time it's all gonna be one district for one city. And then it's called Sunnyside Field. That's not a very good name. So if you have a better name for this community, please drop it in the comments. Otherwise, I will come up with one. So now that we have our district here, we can select individual city service buildings and select operating districts. So in this instance, this is our police station and I only want it to operate in Sunnyside Field. So we are gonna select this district. It turns the whole district blue. And that's how you know that this is selected. There are other districts over here. They are not blue. I will demonstrate this a little bit more in just a moment, but let's also select our cemetery and that will only operate here. And then we'll also select our fire department and do the exact same thing. Let's do something a little bit more complex. So I wanna take a look at, for instance, our landfill and select the operating districts for that. So we're gonna say that we want this to basically operate in this entire city. So we'll select all of our districts here, Autumn Springs, Neighborhood, Ravencrest, all these other ones. I haven't renamed these yet. I know I asked for names in the previous episode. We will get around to naming in the next one. And now we have all of these neighborhoods selected and then we'll also select this. Now, the one thing that we might want to consider is that now we have certain areas that are not covered by districts. So for instance, Autumn Springs, which is a hilarious name for our, <laughs> our little industrial district, it doesn't cover our uh, taxi depot right here. So that might be something that we want to contemplate. The taxi depot, that's another one where we could select an operating district. Let's say we don't want our taxi depot serving this area. I have a sneaking suspicion that if we don't limit this, we're gonna see a ton of taxis over there because there's no public transit. So we will absolutely restrict this to operating within our city. Now, as I think about police, it, we have to remember that we actually have two police stations in this town. So I'm going to select just certain operating districts for the downtown station. So we'll say that this, they basically get everything on this side of town and this industrial district. And then we'll look at this other police station over here and we'll assign the other districts. And we can do the exact same thing with schools. So I'm noticing that that school is fairly low utilization. This one is totally packed. Let's balance these. So I have our old school serving most of the downtown area. And then we'll have this new school serving a near the high school. And we're also going to have this serve our new city over here. So that should be helpful, hopefully in balancing uh, the utilization of this. And then once again, we did the exact same thing with fire. So I want to adjust these districts now because we're not necessarily seeing all of these areas completely covered. So we'll just go back into our area tool and we can add a node here, for instance, and enlarge in this district. 
So now this entire area is Autumn Springs. Over here, we've got a district that we're not covering at all. We will just make a new district over here. And it has a lovely name. Madison Terrace is absolutely wonderful. So we will definitely <laughs> add that to the rest of the area. And then over here with Manor Glen, we'll do the exact same thing. We'll, in, we'll in make this larger. And the main reason I care about this is the fire department. I just want to make sure that our fire department is able to cover all of these areas. Otherwise, they wouldn't respond to <laughs> any requests over there, which would be a real significant problem. And now that we have our basic city services set up, it's time to move on to zones and industries. And now for the exciting part. We get to bring this place to life by adding zoning. And I want to kick things off with our farms. And the main reason for that is that we're basically looking at a situation where the city is supposed to support the farms. We want to find a balance between the workers at the farms and the people living in the community. So what I'm thinking is we're going to take a look at our biggest need. What jumps out to me right away is that we really have a need for grains. So that's likely what we're going to what we're going to place. And then second to that, we may also place a bit of livestock farming. So these specialized industries are found underneath zones and then specialized industry. And we have grain farming. Grain farming, the reason why I care so much about this is this is only viable where we have fertile ground. And I don't know why there's so little fertile ground in this game, but there's not a lot. So we do need to use it very judiciously. So we're going to place this somewhere like this. We'll rotate it around. And even though we won't gain a huge benefit from encapsulating this entire area in a farm, I think we're going to do it anyway. So we'll place that. I'm just going to create a mini district. We'll fix this in a second. I want to get rid of this road that's right here. I kind of had this had this stubbed in and whoa, we're looking at the sky. <laughs> we will eliminate this. Now, one thing I do want to do as soon as I cut that off, this road here becomes Brook Lane. So if you want to control your road naming at all, one thing that's very helpful is just to, to leave stubs. And you see these all the time anyway, little dead ends, but I didn't want it to be quite so long. So we'll just end this like, whoa, that is not straight at all. <laughs> we'll have that stub end right there. And now this turns into Elk Lane. So Brook Lane's right here, Elk Lane right there, and we're good to go. We're also going to add in a dirt road going to the farm. And now this is connected to everything it needs to get going. Now we're going to re uh, we're going to adjust the area here and I want to demonstrate a couple of things. First of all, we've got our fertile ground right here. So we're going to just extend this out and we'll try to cover most of the fertile area. And now when you're dragging this, you can actually see the harvestable resources. And this is what I want to point out. So right now we're at 190 tons. I can pull this out into areas where it doesn't have fertile ground. And what we're going to see is that the tonnage won't change very much. So we're at 196, 200, and I guess we're still grabbing just these faint fertile areas. So we're still getting some additional, but just know that at a certain point, especially when you get beyond this, it's not going to change much at all. And now we've got most of this covered in, but I want to really wrap this around the power lines here. So I'm going to hit the I button so that I can see the power line. And what we're able to do is add a node here. So I'll just move that around so that I can purposely shift this over and then slide this down. And you can wrap these all the way around these power poles. It's easier the first time you do it. I will be completely upfront with you. But you are able to do something like that if you want to. And that can just make it look a little bit more natural because that's what I'd expect to see in an area like this. So this is our first farm. It has 29 potential employees and we're going to add one more farm over here. So we'll add our gravel road going along this contour line. And then I want to find a line right here so it curves in nicely. I'm going to add in a row of trees to separate these. And we'll go with our pine trees. They're fairly large and they'll be evergreens. So that delineates our property line and will also provide us uh, some, some wind breaks as well. And now let's place our additional specialized industry. So livestock farming can go anywhere so we don't have to worry about it too much. I want to make sure that we can cover as much of this area as possible. I'm going to place that right about here. And then for this one, I am going to attempt to build around this initially. Let's also give a little bit of space. We'll place some trees along the road here. And there we go with this farm. Once again, we need to add a road 
and this thing should now be operational. I am going to adjust this one more time and we're gonna go back into our area tool. And this time I wanna have all my snap twos on just so that I can fix this part. And we are good to go here as well. Once again, I'm gonna plant some trees good enough for me we don't need to develop every square inch along this area where it's basically utility land i'm thinking that we'll also plant some trees we will go with a more moderate size brush full strength and i'm going to mix some oaks and some pines through here now, i highly recommend that you do this right away as well mostly because it's going to take a long time for everything here to grow and there we go. So now that we have our industry in place, we can get an idea for the number of jobs in this community. Right now, there's 101 employees in this community. Let's add some housing. So to begin, we'll add some single family homes off here. For everything in this community though, I wanna go with the marquee tool because I wanna control this and really think about our landscape. I don't want to do this all willy nilly like. So I'm going to go and hit I so we can see what we're doing and we will place our homes individually, particularly along the coast, giving a bit of space so that we are able to uh, not encroach and create lots of crazy cliffs here. I'm gonna also switch back and forth between European and American. It'll give it a little bit of variation and make it seem like we've had different developers in this place over time. And then where we have trees, mature trees like this, why don't we just leave some of those behind? And I deeply regret inadvertently encroaching upon that one right there. Now, right here, we've got a pretty significant dip. So we are gonna smooth some of this out. This is something that was a self-created issue. So I don't think there's any harm in changing it up. I love coming into these areas that have forest and just adding some homes and then leaving some space. I think it makes it feel really natural. So you end up with spots where there are trees that are the old growth forest that we're just leaving behind. That happens in real life. Let's mimic it in the game. And then here I wanna focus growth on Lilac Street. So I'm going to temporarily add a path right there just to adjust my zoning. And then as these fill in, I'll get rid of that path. And now if we look at the zoning, it's perfect. We can have a couple of things here, but I think we're gonna have just one random spot of commercial. This is a fairly undesirable location. And even for commercial, it probably won't do great there, but it will do better than a home. And one of the things that's really interesting about City Skylines too, is you can now zone underneath highways and things of that nature. I'm going to place, I was contemplating placing that there, but I, I just think it doesn't make a lot of sense in a community of this size. But that is an option that we do have is to place that right there if we wanted to. I also want to add a home near our farms. So we'll add one right here and then maybe one right here as well. And I basically tried to make it feel like there's a little bit of a forest in the front, the home's right there. And then in the back, they've got a big yard. So that is a fun little thing to do over there. Now, right here, we're gonna focus on our downtown area and I really wanna mix our zoning considerably. So I wanna have mixed use buildings, but I don't want them to end up being these 12 story uh, monoliths. I want something fairly small and compact. And I know that if I go with two by two, I will get five story buildings approximately. So we'll go with a bunch of these and they will come in basically as soon as I place them. And we can even sprinkle in some row homes here, some two by row homes. It might actually be fun to take one of these and swap it out for row homes. They won't be very tall. There'll be some differences in the heights of the buildings, but that can feel really nice in an area like this as well. We're gonna put in some commercial as well. And I think we'll go back about four units here for all of these buildings. And we'll have a mixture of everything. And for row homes, we've always got to remember, focus on the street that you want the row home on first, and then everything else comes second. And then I think we'll add just one tall building. So we'll have one note of density here with one apartment. That's all that we need, not much more. And then we'll round out with a bit of commercial. Now, while this fills in, I wanna to return to this area by the highway. And I'm thinking of this as being kind of a strip mall plus some gas stations. So we're gonna load this up with those sorts of uses. And these are uses that thrive in high visibility environments. So as you're driving by, you might notice this. You see the water tower, see some homes, and then you see, oh my goodness, there's a fast food restaurant. I am starving. I'm gonna come down here 
And that's why we have these over here. So these sorts of uses like to locate in areas like this because of that. So we will facilitate that sort of thing here as well. Gas stations too also love areas like this. Now with these uses, we can click on these to try to get a feel for what's here. It looks like we're getting a gas station, a bunch of car dealerships, kind of the sorts of things, convenience foods that you might expect to see over here. So makes a lot of sense. And now for the rest of this, I want more residential most likely, but let's just double check. We'll take a look at our households, our residents versus our employees. Yeah, we've got a lot more employees than residences. So everything else here is going to be some residential. I'm gonna add in an alleyway behind our downtown area. And then I'm noticing that our zoning is not focused on the correct streets. So I'm removing that here. And I'm actually gonna remove our alleyway for now as well. And because I clearly care far too much about the way zoning occurs on this road, I've gone absolutely crazy and have used paths to orient all the buildings towards this rear street here. Now right here, it looks like I used the wrong zoning district type. I'm gonna change this, but we are going to kind of mix it up a little bit and we will use some European row homes right here and some European mixed use and see how that turns out. Sometimes you just gotta experiment a little bit and it looks like that European mixed use is gonna be super tall. So I'm not all that excited about that. So we'll stick with some row homes, much, much, much better. And then we'll round the bend with more single family residential homes. And in this area, I think that's about it in terms of homes, maybe a couple more down here, but that's that's it. I love separating the homes further as you get away from the downtown core. To me, that feels like that natural gradation of density that you would expect to see in an area where things just kind of begin to transition generally into a rural area. And to, to really show that, separate your uses in your homes. And then along the coasts, I highly recommend that you pay a little bit of extra attention. So go up to your homes, make sure that they're not falling off cliffs, and then get even smaller, even finer, and soften the terrain so it doesn't look like this. This looks really bad, not good at all. Now with the soften terrain tool, I actually decided to go with a larger brush. And the reason why is you gotta think you're averaging out the height in between the brush that you have. So we we have a larger brush, we're averaging on a larger area. So that means that the slope will be a little more gentle. So, you know, there's a give and take there. When you have a nice fine tool, you can really control what you're doing, but you're averaging on a really small piece of property, meaning that you'll probably still have a cliffside here. So give some thought as to what is the most appropriate in the place that you're working. And also, Toggle these every now and then because you'll realize that it's not so bad in some locations and it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. There we go. I think that that covers most everything. Things are looking really good around here. We've got one more thing that we really need to focus on and that is a bit of landscaping and detailing. I don't think we have to go crazy here, but we do need to give folks some opportunities to have leisure that doesn't cost them money. Right now, if they wanna go and do some leisure activities, it's probably going to a bar, which is fine, but sometimes you just wanna to go to a park. And it's something that you can do by clicking on your leisure button inside of your info views. And you can see, yeah, we've got three things to do in town. We've got a bar, we've got a bar, and we've got a cemetery, which is kind of dark. That seems like uh, we, we could do better. So we are going to add in a park space right here. And I'm almost thinking that we should probably unlock some better parks. So let's go into our progressions menu. We'll go under parks and recreation and we will unlock the park maintenance building, which will keep all of our parks clean, our plazas and other recreational facilities clean and in good condition. And then we'll also unlock large parks, which will provide uh, more entertainment and enjoyment and accommodate a larger number of visitors. So we don't need a ton of these, maybe even one is, is, is sufficient in this community. And then sports parks. So we're unlocking a ton of parks. We're not gonna go for our large sports parks just yet, but we have given ourselves some more options. So I think that we'll begin by placing a large park. We've got this large city park now, which I think would be an excellent amenity kind of at the end of this road. So we'll offer a Vista in and you can see it doesn't like this. It's snapping to the road and it's not happy. We'll take care of this ourselves, turn off road snapping. 
We'll just set that a little ways back. And now it wants a pedestrian connection, so we'll definitely do that as well. And then through the rest of the park, I want to continue to add paths. And we'll focus on our contours here. And I think that's pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and add a couple of other parks through here. So we'll add in a small plaza or a playground maybe. That, that's probably a better fit. And then we'll add everybody's favorite, a dog park. And then we've got a couple of sports parks. I think that we'll add a tennis court and a basketball court and we'll add one of those right about here. So what I've noticed is I can't actually fit the tennis court in right here. So I'm gonna attempt to replace the road just to give myself a little bit more space. So we'll grab our two lane road, we'll turn off our snap to existing geometry and I'm gonna just attempt to shift this over ever so slightly. And I thought that I was gonna get away with one but it looks like this home did not like what I did. That's okay. Little eminent domain to get a tennis court. That's super realistic. But it was just what we needed to fit that in there. So you know what? I'm not going to apologize for it. We'll also get our basketball court in here as a result. And then for the rest of this, I just want some landscaping. And I don't want to get super crazy specific about it for the most part. I am going to make sure that we get some in areas like this. But I think that we should probably just go with a fairly wide stroke here and just plant a bunch of trees in these areas that could use some. And I'm gonna go with a mixture of evergreens. So we'll make sure that we've got pines in here and some spruce. And then we're gonna go with things like oak and alder as well. And now I do wanna check one last time. How are we doing with our households versus employees? We still have more uh, employees than total residents and households in this area. So that might be something we wanna consider. Maybe we want to go and add in some low rent housing or something of that nature. Just one, we'll add one right about here. And I'll also add a couple of modest mid-level apartments. I'm gonna let these fill in and see if that gets us closer to an equilibrium here. And now that those are built, we can see that we are considerably closer, but we're not all the way there. These have filled up immediately, which is great, but it's just going to be a little bit off. And honestly, that is OK. I think that we've made a lot of progress in this area, though. And there's only one more thing left to do today, and that is take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour. Just as I began thinking about the city tour, the snow began to melt and I began to see just how much this city needed more detailing. So I added a number of paths through here, connecting up these neighborhoods that are separated by forests. I've gone through and added little areas like this where we have a bunch of landscaping along a new path and a tree planted in the middle. And I've gone through and I've added spruce trees in between some of these homes to give a little bit of privacy and separation on what would be extra sized lots. And just generally, I've gone ahead and tried to make this place feel more cohesive and complete, adding some fishing piers so that you can go fishing, and then removing trees on places like this where it's just way too steep to support those sorts of trees. And in general, I think that the city's looking a ton better and much more complete and a much better place to live. And ultimately, that's what this is all about, creating places that would be good to live, that would be places that are reasonable and realistic. And just generally, I think that this all feels much, 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 much better 
after making just a couple of changes. There is one more thing I am curious about though. I wanna know how close we are to meeting our equilibrium here in between our employees and our residents. And look at that, we are really close now. There's about 50, 60 people commuting into this area for work. So I'm really pleased with where we are leaving this and I hope that you are as well. Remember, we need a name for Sunnyside Field, something much better than that. So if you've got one, drop it in the comments. And I wanna thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I wanna thank you so much for your time today. There's a million things you could have been doing. You decided to hang out with me and play City Skylines too and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye. Yeah.